When talking about the early history of Transformers, there's a name you're bound to run into. Diaclone. Indeed, with a handful of exceptions, all of the earliest Transformers originally came from the Diaclone toy line, owned by Japanese toy company Takara, or else Microman, also owned by them. Despite this, I found very little discussion of Diaclone in the English-speaking sphere of the Transformers fandom, at most appearing as an early footnote before moving on to its more famous successor. And so, I have decided to make this video chronicling the history of Diaclone. Diaclone started in the year 1980 as an attempt by Takara to capitalize on the giant robot boom going on in Japan at the time, at least partially caused by the success of the previous year's mobile suit Gundam. The early story of Diaclone is quite simple. In the future year of 1980X, Earth is undergoing an energy crisis. Thankfully, a powerful new energy source is found deep inside the Earth, Friesen gas. Using this gas, humanity achieves new heights of prosperity. Unfortunately, in 1990X, the Varuders, aliens who scour the galaxy, robbing planets of their Friesen, leaving nothing but empty husks behind, set their sights on Earth. In response, humanity creates a new army to defend their home planet. Connected by friendship as hard as a diamond and camaraderie as fierce as a cyclone, the Diaclone Corps rise up to repel the invading Varuders. The first year of the toy line was rather experimental, with only two of the five releases being transforming robots. First and foremost we had a robot base, the largest Diaclone toy of the year by far, clocking in at approximately 45 centimeters. Transforming from a robot to a gigantic base tank mode, he functioned both as a frontline fighter and a mobile command center. His head also provided Diaclone with its distinctive logo. The second robot of the line was Dia Battles, a combiner formed from the combination of three jet fighters. Apart from them, the line included the Dia Train and the Cosmo Roller, two vehicles which did transform, but neither of which had a humanoid robot mode, turning from train to jet fighter and all train vehicle to reconnaissance platform, respectively. Finally, there were the power bases, small playsets which came in four variations and each came with a small, non transforming vehicle they could launch. Following an early victory by Diaclone, the Varuder Emperor sends his general Ingam and his fleet to Earth. The Diaclone Corps starts constructing new robots in response to the intensifying war. After a somewhat confused first year, by 1981 Diaclone had cemented its identity as a robot franchise. There were more releases this year than last, and all of them were robots. Following the star's introduction of Ingam, whom as a side note, the Waruder logo is based on, the first Waruder toy was released, the insect-themed three-component combiner Barudarops. The Heroes also had several new toys of course, including Big Powered, a robot piloted by the smaller powered suit like robotic Matroshka doll. The powered suits were also sold separately. Gats Blocker, a robot made out of an impressive 14 components, Die Attacker, which transformed into a space attacker, and finally F1 Dasher, Drill Dasher, and Sky Dasher, the first Diaclone toys to eventually become Transformers in the form of the Power Dashers, a trend which would continue next year. The Waruder Army has erected a lunar base. In response to Diaclone Corps start development on Fortress Robot X, which will allow them to take the fight to space and destroy the Overruters' foothold on the moon. But General Ingam launches guerrilla attacks against Diaclone headquarters to stop its construction. Humanity enacts a new strategy to deal with these attacks. 1982 saw the release of Fortress Robot X, the second robot on the playset Base Robot and successor to Robot Base from two years ago. Battle Buffalo, yet another three-component combiner, also came out this year, as well as two of the strangest robots in the Diaclone toy line. Double Soldier and Twin Combat, both part of, and only members of, the Robot and Robo subline. Each of these toys had two robot modes and a jet mode. There was also Sky Base, transforming from a bird-like fighter jet into a small base mode, but without any robot mode, reminiscent of Die Train and Cosmo Roller from 1980. The Varuers only had two new toys this year. The walking sectors, wind up walking toys that came with a Varuder suit, a Varuder equivalent to last year's powered suit. 1982 was also a time of transition for Diaclone. In its first years, the toy design had been outsourced to Studio Nive, a design studio that primarily provided mechanical designs for anime. The toys were designed by Kazutaka Miyatake, who provided mechanical designs for space battleship Yamato and Aim for the Top Gun Buster, among many others, and Shoji Kawamori, most well known as the creator and director of the Macross franchise, but also an accomplished mechanical designer in his own right. 
However, at some point during 1982, the car transitioned to in-house designs done by a man named Kodian Ono, who brought a new concept to the franchise, the new strategy alluded to in the story, the car robot concept, robots that transform into real cars. If you're a Transformers fan watching this video, you've probably been wondering why none of the robots so far have been familiar to you. That's likely to change from this moment forward. The car robot subline started with six toys in 1982. The Countach LP500S, which would be released as Sunstreaker, the One Box Cherivanet, which would be released as Ironhide, the One Box Ambulance type, which would be released as Ratchet, the 4WD Hilux, which would be released as Trailbreaker, the Honda City R, and finally a police recolor of the Countach. Neither the City R nor the police Countach would ever become Transformers. It should be noted here that the concept of sentient robots is a Transformers invention. All Diaclone mechs have human pilots. You can easily see this when looking at Ironhide and Ratchet, both of whom make much more sense as piloted machines than they do living beings. The Diaclone base was reconstructed, but the Varudors' guerrilla attacks continue. In response, Diaclone starts development of their real and robocore to quickly deal with attacks no matter where they are. Meanwhile, in deep space, a new horrible Varuder strategy was forming. After its introduction last year, the car robot subline was renamed Real and Robo due to the addition of toys that, that transformed into vehicles other than cars. This subline was a major focus this year, with nearly every toy released belonging to it. And for the first time, every new robot released this year would eventually become a Transformer. Starting with the cars we have, the Fair Lady Z, later Blue Streak, the 4WD Hilux Wrecker type, later Hoist, the Honda City Turbo, later Skids, the Fire Engine, later Inferno, the Fair Lady Z Racing type, later Smokescreen, and finally the J59 Jeep, later Hound. Protecting the Earth's skies were the Jet Fighter Robo F15 Eagles. They came in two variations, the Super High Speed Fighter type and the Acrobat type, which would become Starscream and Thundercracker respectively, as well as repainted into the rest of the Decepticon jets. However, the mold differences in the second generation of jets are Transformers original. The train robots, all named after which type of train they transformed into, would bring a new concept to Diaclone. While the franchise is no stranger to combiners, this set marked the first time each component had its own individual robot and vehicle modes as well as combined form, simply named Train Robo. While a Train Robo would also eventually become a Transformer, it would, unlike its compatriots, never leave Japan. It was renamed Raiden and released in the 1987 Japan-only Transformers The Headmaster's toy line. The final real and robo toys of the year were the three change attackers. Like the Diatrain, Cosmo Roller and Skybase before them, these had two vehicle modes but no robot mode, but were adapted to Diatron's new direction by having one mode be a real vehicle mode before opening up into a sci-fi-esque attack mode. They are quite similar in concept to Hasbro's Mask franchise, though I don't know whether it has intentional inspiration or merely coincidence. They would be the last of these kinds of toys released as part of Diaclone. There would only be five toys released in 1983 not based on the real and Robo concept. The Attack Robo's motorized pullback toys that auto-transformed as he sprang forward. They came in two variations, Sky Type and Drill Type, which would eventually be released as Transformers as the Jump Starters, Top Spin and Twin Twist. Finally, there were the Insector Robos, the only Varuru toys released this year. Three different toys were released, Kuwagatra, transforming into Sty Beetle, Batas, transforming into a Locust, and Cabotron, transforming into a Rhinoceros Beetle. These are the only Varugus to ever become Transformers, being the first Insecticons, Shrapnel, Kickback, and Bombshell. They would also be the last original Varudo toys released in the Diaclone toyline. When looking back, 1983 was Diaclone's peak, with the highest number of new releases for any year, clocking in 26 different toys. After his consecutive failures, opposition to General Ingham rises within the Varuda ranks. A new ambitious general named Blue Star takes over the invasion of Earth. Using his powers to manipulate space-time, he summons ancient dinosaurs to bolster his forces. Though the Diacon Corps managed to defeat the Varuda guerrillas, they were unprepared for his new onslaught. 
they start developing dinosaur robots to match Jen's new power. While 1984 had fewer new releases than 1983, many of the most famous Diaclone Transformers came out this year. If you're a casual Transformers fan, this is the year I guarantee you'd recognize at least a couple toys. As it now becomes standard, 1984 introduces a slew of new car robots. Just like last year, all of them, and indeed every new toy released this year, became Transformers. The new cars are the police car Fairy DZ, later Prowl, the Porsche 935 Turbo, later Jazz, the new Countach LP500S, later Sideswipe, the F1 Ligier JS11, later Mirage, the Lance Stratos Turbo, later Wheeljack, the new Countach police car, later both Red Alert and Clamp, down, the truck Crane, later Grapple, and the Corvette Stingray, later Crax. Two new kinds of car robot were also introduced. The first were the double changers. They had the car and robot modes one would expect, as well as a sci fi attack vehicle mode, essentially combining last year's change attacker gimmick with car robots. There were three of them Celica XX, Ferrari BB, and Savannah RX7, which became the Transformer Omnibots Downshift, Overdrive, and Camshaft, respectively. The second new kind of car robot combined the old base robot's Taurus playset concept with real and robo's realistic vehicles. A trailer truck where the cab turns into the robot battle convoy and the trailer can fit many of the other car robots inside and open up into a repair base for them. Battle convoy did, of course, become Optimus Prime. Much like last year's train robo, a new real and robo combiner was released, this time based on construction vehicles. Like their predecessors, the individual robot modes are named after what kind of vehicle they turn into, and the combined form was simply named the Construction Vehicle Robo. They became the Constructicons and Transformers' iconic first combiner, Devastator. As advertised by the Star segment, 1984 saw the release of the Dinosaur Robos. Five different robots were released, each turning into, and named after, a different kind of dinosaur. They were Tyrannosaurus, Triceratops, Brontosaurus, Stegosaurus, and Pteranodon. They became the Transformers Dinobots, Grimlock, Slag, Sludge, Snarl, and Swoop. It's worth noting that the Dinobots' designs, sans Grimlock, were used for the villains of the 1990 anime Brave Skyser, giving the Dinosaur Robots the unique distinction of appearing in three different franchises. As a final note for the year, despite the story introducing a new villain, no new Waruder toys were released. Blue Star develops the fearsome Machine Dragon, a powerful dinosaur machine hybrid. In response, the Diaclone Corps develop Powered Convoy, an upgraded battle convoy capable of traveling through Blue Star's space time distortions, and the triple changers to support it. Diaclone will not give in to the threat of Blue Star. By 1985, Diaclone was on its last leg. The Transformers animated TV show had started in America last year and would be imported to Japan later this year. As such, there were only four new toys released this year. Powered Convoy. While the core robot is the same mold as Battle Convoy, it has a new trailer which can hold more car robots and transforms into armor for the robot to sit inside of, harkening back to 1981's powered suits. Considering Powered Convoy is an upgrade to Battle Convoy both in the story and in toy design, I find the road his Transformers counterpart, Ultra Magnus, had in the Transformers the movie quite ironic. The two triple changers both have a robot mode and two realistic vehicle modes. The jet type transforms into a jet and a tank, while the helicopter type transforms into a jet and a helicopter. While the jet type would become Blitzwing, the helicopter type was not purchased by Hasbro to become a Transformer. Apart from some of the ones with minor mold differences, every Diaclone type with a robot mode after 1982 became Transformer, so I cannot help but wonder why this one in particular was excluded. Finally we have the Varudus' Machine Dragon. Originally from the Takara toy line Magnemo, where it was called the Magneborg Machine Saurer, this toy was imported into Diaclone, hence why it seems so ill-fitting. Perhaps one could see this toy as a sign of Takara's dwindling faith in Diaclone. And with that, Diaclone ended, with its sparsest year yet and without even finishing its story. Outside of the occasional nod in Transformers fiction, or a new toy given the old color, its only true remaining legacy being that to this day, in all his incarnations, Optimus Prime is still named Konoha in Japan, and Diaclone was largely forgotten. 
forgotten that is until 2016 when Takara, now Takara Tommy after a merge in 2006, started their Diaclone reboot toyline. It features high quality toys for adult collectors based on the old Diaclone toys that did not become Transformers. I like these toys a lot, but I found very little discussion of them in the English speaking parts of the internet. So I hope you'll join me next time as I go through the story of the Diaclone reboot and take a look at the Dianauts, the brave individuals that form the Diaclone Corps.